Hello, collectors! It's Steven here for the third time this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles week with a review of the angry brother of the turtle group, the SH Figure Arts Raphael, the Christmas themed turtle, and arguably the most popular alongside Leo. Tamashi Nations finally released a Raphael figure as a Bandai Premium Web Shop exclusive brought to the US by Bluefin Distribution. But is this figure worth the purchase? Say it with me, everyone. Let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. Third video, third time in this rodeo, so you know what to expect. Generally speaking, in terms of sculpt and paint, Raph looks nice with some legit concerns in the paint department. However, the sculpt details are really nice, so it can be appreciated well enough in that regard. So, Let's just cut right to the chase and get into the finer details for this specific Ninja Turtle. The head is the same neutral expression all four turtles have come with, but for this one, even after some brushing, there's still some random stuff on the face, and I don't know why that is. Not noticeable from far away, but still, up close, on normal inspection, you're going to be able to see it. Now let's look at where the bandana is tied up, and this is where we'll see the main issue with Raph, and you'll also see this with Mikey too, where mold degradation seems to be setting in here. You'll see more mold lines on this guy, and more spots where he was clearly removed from the mold. Pay attention to the arms too, and to the different bands on the figure. The plastron, once again, it's pretty cool and flexible, revealing a fully sculpted torso. The arms are sculpted to look muscular, which kind of makes me think more of a soldier than a ninja, but still the details are cool. And this is one of the clear spots where you can see one of the parts where he was removed from the mold. Tisk, tisk, tisk. The belt buckle with an R on it is die cast with some pretty clean paint but the actual belt doesn't look too hot with the miscellaneous crap on it I couldn't brush off, and it has some thick paint. Understandable to an extent since it's rubber and you have to use a different paint application to it, but still it's kind of upsetting if you're a stickler for details like that. The thighs are in the same vein as the rest of the body with the sculpt, clear, cleanly defined muscles, but the mold lines are a bit more apparent than usual, so those who despise these, yeah. Good, uh, good luck getting over them. From the shins on down, as you know, we do have die cast parts, and be careful of scratched paint. Mine already is a lost cause on the left shin, and it already has some muffed up toes. Yeah, not great. In the articulation section, I actually missed this on the recording, but afterwards I noticed some more paint flaked off of Raph on the toes. Yeah. Last up, we have a look at the shell, Finally, where we see it's pretty clean, but mine's got a hair on the shell that I can't get rid of no matter what I do. So in a nutshell, again, same song and dance here with Raph as it would be with the other turtles, but this time we have red instead of another color. Alright, so if you've been keeping up with my Ninja Turtle review so far, at least the SH Figure Arts ones, then you already know what we're getting for articulation. So for Raphael, I'm going to do a quick rundown so you're familiar with it if this is the only turtle you're going to be picking up. So the head attaches into the neck on a double ball joint system. So the head rests on a ball joint and then a ball joint rests into the neck. So this way you can twist and turn the head around, bob it back and forth, move it around. Then the neck plugs into the body on a ball joint. So this way we can move Raph's head around even a bit more. That far down, about that far up. We have butterfly hinges here in the shoulders, but be careful because the plastron we have paint transfer here, and you can see it just a little bit there on the thigh, which is not very good. That's not good, folks. So when you're moving the arms around, you want to be mindful of that. We have ball joints where the shoulders plug into the body. Be careful because you want to move them right here, the arms, at the shoulders anyway, and you don't want to move them down here because you might stress the plastic, and you don't want to do that because that can lead to breaks and cracks over time. We do have hinges in the shoulders, so you can move the arms up and down like so. But as you'll notice right here, occasionally as you go to move the shoulders at that hinge, you may have plastic on plastic contact, and it may rub. So you want to be mindful of paint rubbing and paint transfer there. 
We do have a bicep swivel, so you could spin the arms all the way around if you would so please. And we have double hinged elbows. Unfortunately, because we have the pads there, we are going to get a little bit of a block in terms of moving the arm, but that's okay because we still get a pretty nice range of movement, yeah? Yeah. We do have swivel hinge wrists, as usual for an SH Figure Arts figure, and since the hand plugs in on a ball joint, and you'll see that a little bit more in just a couple of minutes, uh, we get another point of movement, but not too much. Like you saw before, underneath, we do have a fully sculpted torso, and we do have a bit of an ab crunch, though unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to move that ab crunch in specific. Uh, every once in a while, it'll move on accident for me. You can sort of see it moving here a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Not too much, but hey, you know, it does move. But we do have a waist joint, so we can twist and turn, wrap around, get them to bob back and forth a little bit. But do be mindful that we do have the belt, the band here, which does feel like it's maybe made of some sort of rubber material. And you want to be careful because you don't want to break that. So you don't want to twist and crank him one way or the other and cause that to get stressed out. So be mindful when you're moving him around too because the shell might shift around. And that can also cause stress here because it might come unglued there or up front too. So for the legs, we do have hinges in the hips because we do have pull-down hips. Be mindful because if you go to move the hips at the thigh connection, we do have plastic on plastic contact just like we would at the shoulder. So if you're not using them correctly, we might have paint rub. And that's about as far wide as Raph's legs will go. And we do have a ball joint connection where the legs plug into the hips. So legs move about that far up and that's how you get the paint transfer. And about that far back, we also get the swivel, which is implied pretty neat. We have double hinged knees. They bend about that far. We do have ball jointed ankles so we can spin them around and we get ankle rocker movement. Not too much like let's say a common rider or an Ultraman but still good enough. And we have a toe hinge move up and move down. So with something like this I'm going to try to do something. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it in one shot. With the die cast joints and the die cast parts, we're able to get some nice stability here for articulation. And you're going to be able to get Raph into some pretty neat poses. You wouldn't be able to get figures in normally with some creativity. Maybe I'm going to be able to do this. There you go. He's standing on the toe portion of his foot. That's it. Just his toes. So if you're creative with your posing, you're going to be able to get Raph into all sorts of neat and fun poses. Just be mindful of sensitive areas. Time for the accessories. We get the standards here with extra hands, a severed head, we get his sigh and an extra back part to store them, a shuriken, and a kunai, not with chain unfortunately. The hands are the same hands that we get from before, with fists, fists with holes to hold weapons, slightly splayed hands to hold weapons, and then fully splayed hands for action poses. Swap the hands by gripping them at the base of the hands by the wrists, pull them, and then pop the new hands on, but be careful not to take the joint or the bands on the wrists with you. Now the sigh, and I gotta say, they look pretty nice. Very shiny, and the paint is pretty well applied and even. Well done! You just slide them into his hands of your choosing, but be careful with paint rub over time on the fists with the holes on them. Next, we get an alternate back part for the Psy, and the piece gets swapped with this part on his belt on the shell. There's a hole underneath this part so you can cheat to get it off by sliding your nail in there and just popping it off. And then you just pop the new part on, and then you slide the Psy in, and boom, you're good to go. It's not a very difficult process at all, especially after you do it the first time. Of course, he can reach back behind him and grab the Psy when they're stored so this way it looks like he's drawing his weapon. The only major complaint here is we should have gotten hands for him so this way he can hold the sigh by the loops near the handles, and also a part so he can store the sigh at his hips. Now we have that severed head, and it does have a purpose. If you remove the bandana part on the currently attached head, you pop off that head and pop the new head on and reattach the bandana part, boom, we have a new angry screaming face. The only downside to this face on mine is that I have spotty quality control with drips of red and surprisingly yellow paint on it. I don't know why that's there, but yeah. 
Overall, though, aside from that, the face on mine, it's pretty cool. Last up, we have two extra weapons with the Shuriken and the Kunai. And it's only a real shame that we only get one of each with Raph. They are both sculpted and painted well enough for something so small. And Raph, by extension with the other turtles, hold them well enough with the slightly splayed hands. You actually won't be able to hold them with the fists with holes in them. So, all in all, Raph's accessories, though light, are solid and fitting for a ninja. Arguably, some might say being happy with two small weapons but upset with a pizza slice is odd since pizza's awesome, but we should have gotten a whole pie there. Here, we have two nice complete extra weapons that are usable, and we can have fun with them. But I mean still, Bandai cheapened out a lot, and we could have gotten more here. I really think two of each of the extra weapons would have been much better to have. And size comparison time. And as you can see, he should fit in well with wherever he is on your shelf. If you cleared off some space for your average SH Figure Arts figure in anticipation for Raphael in the mail, then chances are you estimated well enough. So buy now, skip, or wait for that deal. Raph looks pretty solid, but he's just like the others. He's a bit rough around the edges, and for me, he's the worst offender for the quality control issues, especially with the legs. Articulation's no different from the others, which isn't exactly a bad thing, it's pretty good, and the accessories are serviceable to a turtle badass. Fans of the series will want to pick this guy up, but just wait to find the best deal you can. MSRP, not worth it. $50 or so, you got yourself a pretty sweet deal for a pretty sweet turtle. Well, that's it for this video, but that doesn't mean you need to close out just yet. There are a few other videos that just popped up on your screen, so go ahead and click on those to watch some more of my videos. And then there's the description to check out where I've linked to where you can get this figure or others like it and the credits to see how this video was made. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment and subscribe. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching, collectors, and I'll catch you in the next video.